points. Um, I'm going to call this, uh, uh, say, just 10, 20, um, 22. and uh, 15 okay. and 30. All right, and we're just going to call this uh, time one, time two, time three, time four, time five. And we're at time five here. Now, suppose we have collected these data, right? So uh, let's just switch over to the larger screen so you can see. Yep, okay. Now, what do we do now? Uh, so this is data. So the data, the XT is uh, 10, 20. This will be what we collect, record, right? Either in computer database or manually on a chart right so we get this that's fine but what we're going to do is to uh, not separately measure a trend data instead we're going to extract trend data from within the data itself so uh, the way we go is to look at this as a mini trend so that's there is this mini trend trending up and then slightly lesser trend upwards uh, trend downwards a very steep trend upwards and the way we uh, record this is by extracting extracting the the trend data so we can say that the trend okay, the trend uh, at time t is basically the result of the trend uh, the value, the delta value, right? So there's a rise in 10 units. Yep. And there is a rise in 2 units. There's a drop in 7 units. And there's a rise in 15 units. Okay. So you see that I've extracted the trend as another set of data. Now, obviously, this is uh, hidden inside the data, but we have extracted it out and we can now treat it as if this were separately observed <clears throat> and measured so we can apply es on this and then we can apply another es on this yeah so we can get the baseline estimate and then we can get what is the next trend all right what is the next trend what is the next baseline? And then when we add it up, it becomes the final forecast value. Okay. Well, because when we forecast the baseline, we say it is the, the, the trend sequence has been this, 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 this. Then we ask what's the next trend. If the next trend is downwards, then whatever we forecast for the baseline will adjust down by a little bit. Because the trend is the, the micro trend inside is telling us that the next forecast is going to be down a little bit. But if the micro trend is forecast to be uh, another upswing, then we will increase from our initial crude baseline estimate. You see, in that sense, we extracted the micro trend features from the data, all right, and then use it as our fine tuning for our forecast. And this is exactly what uh, this second formula here is trying to do to us, all right, where we say, what's the next trend value? we ask so that we can add it into our baseline forecast later on that we obtain up here right so what we do is supposedly right supposedly we need to use the next data value which is x t plus one minus x of t you see because the way we did it was to use the data minus data the consecutive data minus of then we get the micro trend and that's correct that's trend so the thing is that 
if we were to calculate this, we need to know x of t plus 1, which is exactly the, the value that we are using f of t plus 1 to forecast. So that defeats the purpose. If we know x of t plus 1, we wouldn't need f of t plus 1. So there's a bit of a hmm, uh, circular loop here. So the way to, to break it is to use a proxy, right? So to use an estimate. And we say that so far, b of t plus 1 is our best uh, uh, outlook about x of t plus 1. So we're going to basically use b instead of x. And we say, let's approximate the micro trend formed from x of t plus 1 minus x of t by using b of t plus 1, which we now know after the first step, minus b of t, which we already know. So that presumably will give the same uh, slope, even though it may be at different heights, right? So, so we're, we're not too far off in using this proxy measure, but at least it's a value that we can compute. <clears throat> so this subtraction gives us the trend value, the trend true data value that we multiply into beta, right? Then plus one minus beta, uh, times the previous trend forecast and then we will be uh, game right because we are basically uh, calculating another exponential smoothing and t of t plus one basically is our es forecast for the next trend value okay then after calculating b of t plus one t of t plus one we can finally add them together to get our forecast for next uh, time t plus 1. Now, um, in terms of execution, do follow the sequence here uh, to do this step, b, b of t plus 1 first, followed by t of t plus 1. Although there are two different components, actually t of t plus 1 uh, requires the value of b of t plus 1. So we have to carry out the two formulas in this sequence. All right, so that takes care of how to calculate the value. Here's an example, because it, it can seem a, seem a bit confusing. Um, we're given alpha 0.2, beta 0.1. Now, um, why do we need two values? In fact, it gives us more flexibility. Right? There's no reason why the trend fluctuations, whether it is highly fluctuating or very dull, must be the same as the fluctuating level of the baseline, which is given by alpha, right? So if the baseline is highly fluctuating, but the trend is pretty dull, that is constantly climbing very, very definitely, then you can have low beta and high alpha. Or low alpha, because baseline is dull, but there is trend going on. So up, down, up, down, up, down, you know, a lot of uh, very definite uh, fluctuations. Uh, then beta can be high. So we have actually a, a, a wider variety of combinations of alpha and beta in order to adapt to uh, more um, kinds of data patterns with fine-tuned nuances. Yeah. Okay, let's put it that way. Right? So um, here in this case, we have both alpha low and beta also relatively low, suggesting that we have a dull data and also a dull trend. If the dull trend and the trend is upwards, then it keeps on climbing in a pretty uh, deterministic, predictable style because it's very dull. It's not changing its course. It's just rising and rising. So that's, that's possible, right? So, and then we got to be given, because we're doing two ES, we need to have two initial forecasts. One is for the baseline and the other one is for the trend, okay? So now earlier on, we discussed about the initial value for baseline for ES that there are three ways to get it. And uh, setting a zero is kind of like the worst case, right? So try to do some research at least. But for trend, uh, it is not actually erroneous or incorrect to assume that initially we don't have a bias. We don't know whether the data is trending upwards or downwards at first. So it is actually better, <laughs> more preferred, if we have no idea whether the data is trending upwards or downwards to set the initial forecast for trend to zero. Right? So that's exactly what we have done here. So with that, we add up B1 and T1, we get our initial forecast, which is of course, uh, you know, basically manufactured out of T1 and B1. Then what happens is, 
So, so uh, we, we just received the data and that's 1000 here and we need to forecast for time T2. At that point, we don't know is the, the actual demand is 1200 yet. So to get uh, F of 2, we calculate B of 2. B of 2 is uh, the uh, alpha, all right, alpha times alpha times x of x of uh, what is it x of 1 so that's this 1000 here plus 0 0.8 times f of 1 so this 1000 uh, actually comes from here so this gives rise to a thousand this b of 2 now then we have t of 2 which is beta times 1000 this 1000 comes from this b of 2 and the second 1000 comes from the B1. Right? Remember the formula is B of T plus 1, which is B2, minus B of T, which is B1. Plus 0.9 times T1, which is this 0 over here. Okay, so we have a lot of thousands floating around, but be, be clear that the thousands are not arbitrary. They really strictly follow the given formula steps. Okay, so we get a T of 2 of 0, and therefore F2 unfortunately it becomes a thousand again right but uh, going to b of three just do another step just to uh, sort of de disambiguate the one thousands here b of three is 0 0.2 times x of two which is uh, this thousand two hundred here and then we have 0 0.8 times a thousand that's basically uh, your forecast for the previous period so which is here t of 3 is b of 3 which is the value that we just got uh, in b of 3 minus b of 2 which is this value here okay plus 0.9 times t of 2 which is easily 0 from upstairs here okay so we basically are just mechanically substituting the values into the formula uh, and it is totally not complicated. Just do it carefully, systematically, and you should be able to get uh, the forecast values right. Okay, And don't round the values because in forecast formula, the formula never say round the calculated value. Because if you do that and you substitute in further steps, the error may start to be amplified. You know, So uh, you may get, up, get very, very incorrect uh, forecast values later on. So I won't bore you with going through all the rest of these calculations, uh, but it is definitely good exercise for you to trace through some of these values. And because now they are more distinct, it is quite easy to check that, <clears throat> for example, the 1009 here is x of 3 and so on. Okay.